How can you promote home ownership if people can't afford a home? The commitment was $12 trillion, of which, what, $4 trillion has been spent so far. The greatest American alive. I believe there is such a thing as the American dream. And I believe those of us who have been given positions of responsibility must, must uh, do everything we can to spotlight the dream and to make sure the dream shines in all neighborhoods, all throughout our country. Owning a home is a part of that dream. It just is. Right here in America, if you own your own home, uh, you're realizing the American dream. You deserve the American dream. Today, we're going to discuss how the United States government dangled the American dream right in front of your eyes. Then, after you bought the house, plunged you deep into debt, and once you were swimming in debt, came in and confiscated your property. And after your house was gone, everybody turned a huge profit except for you, the greatest American alive. Hi, I'm Project Daddy, political theorist representing the bottom of America, the economically challenged and the politically disenfranchised, representing you, the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. Too many... American families, too many minorities, do not own a home. There is a home ownership gap in America. The difference between uh, Anglo-America and African-American and Hispanic uh, home ownership is too big. We've got to focus the attention on this nation to address this. And it starts with setting a goal, and so by the year 2010, we must increase minority homeowners by at least five and a half million. He made that exact same speech again and again and again uh. in, in 2002, which was very interesting because um, he was, I mean, you could look at it one way, saying that he was um, completely, um, uh, you know, very anxious for minorities to have decent housing, or you could say, I wonder what forces were at play in 2002 to encourage him to do this. Project that he tried to find the American Casino, this documentary that these wonderful people put together. I tried to find it. Project that he tried his hardest, but it's not on streaming services. I do not believe this is the type of information they want you, the greatest American alive, to have. Please, the link is in the description. The link is in the description. Watch the whole thing. It's a fascinating tale of how these people use financial weapons to destroy American citizens' lives. How it starts at the very tippity top with the president, all the way down to the banking sector and the housing market. You can choose a lot of dates, but the legislation. Uh, in December of 2000 was the really big one because it said basically that you couldn't outlaw derivatives. I mean, you couldn't. It it made it. Uh, if you if you read it, it's very clear that it's that it protects these derivatives, credit default swaps, etc. And it allowed them to just balloon beyond control. There is a war on the poor and working class people are not fighting back. They put homes in front of you and said, you need a house, don't you? And then on the backside, there was a nasty banker standing there looking all scary, like, ah, to take all of your money and bust you upside your head with a high interest rate. This is what happened to the American people. This is what happened to our economy. The only thing Project Daddy wants to talk about is home ownership. You can love whoever you want to love. Please make love to whomever you want to make love to do it early and often but you know the best place to make love at it's at home yes it is and if you ain't got no home and it's not fun making love in the back of the car that shit gets kind of boring it does you hear me it's not fun to make love at motels and hotels twenty dollars an hour twenty dollars an hour sixty dollars for the day every american citizen needs a home to call their own so they can bone every american citizen needs a home to call their own so they can bone to understand why this is like a gambling casino, you have to understand what's at stake here. I know what's at stake. The American home is at stake. On a December evening, December 15th, 2000, around seven o'clock, Phil Graham, Republican Senator of Texas, then chair of the Senate Finance Committee, walked to the floor of the Senate and introduced a 262 page bill as a writer to the 11,000-page appropriation bill, which excluded from regulation the financial instruments that are probably most at the heart of the present meltdown. He not only excluded them from all federal regulation, but he excluded them from state regulation as well, which is important because these instruments could be viewed to be gambling instruments where you're betting on whether people will or will not pay off their loans. 
Let's get this right. So the bank gives you a loan at a high interest rate. Then behind closed doors, they're betting that you won't be able to pay your mortgage. If you don't pay your mortgage, they collect your home and then they sell it again and make the same bet over and over again. Bank wins, the bank wins, and the bank wins. And the greatest American alive, you lose. But we also have got to bring others into the process most particularly the real estate industry. After all, the real estate industry benefits when people are encouraged to buy homes. It's in their self-interest that we encourage people to buy homes. Objection collusion. The United States government working with the housing industry and the housing market to turn a profit for the housing market at the expense of you, the greatest American alive. I scream objection. George Bush. Could you please try to hide the fact that you just got a check? He was tickled at the profit that he just made. He said, I can't make all this money by myself. I need to make some money with my partners. Hey, real estate industry, come here, guys. Come make some money with me. Everybody's about to make some money, except for the American citizen, except for you, the greatest American alive. How dare you, George Bush? And so one of the things that uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit today is how to create a sustained commitment by the private sector uh, that will have a powerful impact. First of all, we want to make sure that, that we help work to expand capital available to buyers. And as I mentioned, overcome the barriers that I've delineated, as well as um, provide the education component. In other words, this is not just a federal responsibility. That's why I've challenged the industry leaders all across the country to get after it for this goal, to stay focused, to make sure that we achieve a more secure America by achieving the goal of five and a half million new minority homeowners. I call it America's Home Ownership Challenge. First of all, government-sponsored corporations that help create our mortgage system. I introduced two of the leaders here today. They call those people Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Mortgage giants Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac is intended to help reverse the prolonged housing and credit crisis under the conservatorship the Treasury Department is prepared to put up as much as $200 billion over time if needed. As well as the federal home loan banks will increase their commitment to minority markets by more than $440 billion. Than $440 billion. Billion dollars. Billion dollars. $400 billion, 5 million homes. $400 billion, 5 million homes. He made that exact same speech again and again and again uh, in, in 2002, which was very interesting because um, he was, I mean, you could look at it one way, saying that he was, you know, very anxious minorities to have decent housing, or you could say, I wonder what forces were at play in 2002 to encourage him to do this. The greatest American alive. I call it America's Home Ownership Challenge. Challenge accepted. Mr. Bush, we accept the challenge. The American people accept your challenge. Five and a half million homes per year for the next 10 years. Just because you reneged on the deal don't mean that the American people reneged on it. They still need places to live. Since you proposed that, that's a beautiful proposal, we accept. We're not going to put them in no public housing, no projects, no tenement buildings, none of that subsidized housing nonsense with rats and roaches running around. It really started getting heated in uh, 2004, 2005. The mortgage rates kept dropping for prime mortgages, you know, the, the ones that, that most people get. And that made the others much more valuable because they offered much more yield. When you have that much cash flow that's extra, uh, you can siphon off a whole lot more fees. And that, and that is, you know, it's all about money. And he makes this very important point. You know, there are a lot of people who don't even know what subprime means. So you, we, you really had to explain that, that you get more yield, you get more money out of it. The guys on Wall Street make more money out of subprime loans. Also, he introduced the ideas of the fees, which indeed were extremely important. It's everything on Wall Street is fee-based, certainly with this whole crisis. Um, the things that people were packaging, they wanted to do more and more and more because the yields were so good and the fees were so good. Subprime, when you look at a person and you know, I can't afford it, I can't afford it, and you know I can't afford it. And since I can't afford it, you're gonna hit me with a high interest rate? You're gonna sell me an inferior good at a higher interest rate? You're gonna sell me a shitty house at an inflated price 
and at a high interest rate. There's a war on the poor, and the poor aren't fighting back. They're just going to work every day, clocking in. You, the greatest American alive, you clock in every day, and you want to have a part of the American dream. A part of the American dream is having a home to call your own, and so you don't live in apartment buildings, ro roach and rat infested apartment buildings, project buildings for the rest of your life. Hey, you amazing, hardworking American citizen, since your credit score isn't A1, since you got a 500 credit score, we're going to call you subprime. And since you're subprime, we're going to hit you with a high interest rate, an adjustable rate interest rate, and we're just going to fee you to death. It's a class war on the poor, and they're beating us up with financial tools. They're using the fact that you need a home as a weapon against you. They could have said the bank is going to crash and you own it, but instead they said you're going to crash. You, the greatest American alive, your life is going to crash and the bank is going to live on. You almost have to follow the money in here. Right, because they're taking their fee from the investment banks. In fact, the rating agencies wouldn't even run their own models, meaning that when they rated a deal, they would take their rating agency model, give it to the investment bank. The investment bank would run the entire model for them and then give them the results. And then the results would go to a rating agency analyst and that analyst would take it to committee and that they would eventually agree on the rating but they didn't run their own model. How do you know this? Uh, because I worked at an investment bank and was running the models for them. They were absolutely crucial to the whole system and to the disaster because they were the ones who said, you know, this investment was, you know, could be rated triple A, meaning it's super safe, it's never going to go broke. What their essential function in this whole, what's gone on was to take things that were actually, you know, well, subprime mortgages, which were inherently not so credit worthy, and basically through the magic of um, securitization and everything to um, to say that they were invest, you know, AAA, which was something we used to only apply to things like General Electric and Ex the Exxon Corporation. So they basically took garbage and they spray painted it with gold paint and said this is gold. Trillions of dollars were invested on that basis in stuff that was really garbage but had been made to look like was presented as gold. Because of that, that is why we've had such a huge disaster. They were basically in bed, they, they were being paid by the investment banks to give these ratings. And in fact, the investment banks were doing the rating, you know, were running the models, as he said. And then basically these were rubber stamped by the ratings agency and so, then so passed like on to the public. Moody's, Fitch, I believe, is that the name of it? Moody's, there's big, the big three. There's Moody's, Standard & Poor, which are the biggest two, and then Fitch. The banking institutions, yes, they're the main culprit, but these banks just aren't empty buildings. There are people who work in these buildings, and then there are heroes. I'm not going to say this anonymous person is blameless, but there are heroes who will say that these bad things are happening, and we need more patriots. We need more whistleblowers to come out and say these nasty things are happening to the American people. We need more heroes, but it's a class war. And so you had a whole banking sector of working people who were saying, man, I'm about to make $100,000 this year. I'm going to make $200,000 this year. You had executives saying, I'm going to make a million dollars this year. And they're making all that money at the expense of working people. If you got to be an anonymous hero, I respect you even more. I salute you even more. But if you know bad things are happening to the American people, please tell the truth and get some power. Yes, use your power to fight for the poor. He represents a group, and it's not a big group of people who really understood these, these securitized vehicles. Um, the problem for Wall Street people with coming on camera and showing their face, the reason why you don't see them all the time, is um, they have deferred compensation rules so that if you went on camera, you could lose literally millions of dollars in compensation. And also, you know, you kind of sign away your life when you take one of these jobs and you, and you agree to a lot of things that make it very difficult for you to go public. So that's why you hear so many experts, but you rarely get to hear the bankers like him, talk the way bankers talk to each other. But the ratings agencies, there is this inherent conflict of interest here. The ratings agencies, the big three, you have the government saying everybody has to, you know, they have this kind of quasi-government, uh, it's the stamp of approval. So they're acting as our regulators, and yet they're paid by the investment banks. Look at the homeless rate in America right now. It took 20 years to completely break the American citizen, but they did it. They broke the working class, they took their home, and they kicked them out on the streets. And they said, now you're homeless, what are we going to do? 
They're going to spend another trillion dollars to fight homelessness. That trillion dollars is gone. Once that trillion dollars is spent, these Americans aren't going to have homes. They have to build their lives from scratch. The greatest American alive has to build their lives from scratch. Poverty is America's greatest commodity. They're making trillions of dollars at the expense of you profiting off of the suffering of the american person these people are profiting off of your suffering and i don't want to stand for it project daddy in the motherfucking building hands up hands up to the goddamn ceiling the greatest american alive you are the greatest american alive the greatest american alive the single greatest barrier to first-time home ownership is a high down payment it is really hard for many many low-income families to make the high down payment. And so that's why I've proposed and urged Congress to fully fund the American Dream Down Payment Fund. This will use uh, money, taxpayers' money, uh, to help a qualified low income buyer make a down payment. And that's important. If a, one of the barriers to home ownership is the inability to make a down payment, and if one of the goals is to increase home ownership, it makes sense to help people. We want to make it more full all across America. Secondly, it, there is a lack of affordable housing in, in, in certain neighborhoods. Too many neighborhoods, especially in inner city America, lack affordable housing units. How can you promote home ownership if people can't afford a home? <laughs> and so what I've done is propose what we call a single family affordable housing tax credit to encourage the development of affordable housing in neighborhoods where housing is scarce. He made that exact same speech again and again and again uh -huh. in, in 2002, which was very interesting because um, he was, I mean, you could look at it one way, saying that he was, uh, you know, very anxious for minorities to have decent housing, or you could say, I wonder what forces were at play in 2002 to encourage him to do this. Third major barrier is the complexity and difficulty of the home buying process. There's a lot of fine print on these forms, and uh, it bothers people. It makes them nervous. And so therefore, what Mel has agreed to do and Alfonso Jackson have agreed to do is to streamline the process, make the rules simpler so everybody understands what they are, make the closing much less complicated. We certainly don't want there to be a fine print preventing people from owning their home. We can change the print. That was a full explanation on how to rob the American person blind. Let me knock down every barrier to stop you from being robbed. You don't have the deposit? Oh, you ain't got the deposit? Don't worry about it. I'll waive that fee. Oh, you don't have tax, title, and license? Oh, I'll waive that fee too. President Bush sounded just like a used car salesman. I'll make sure that I waive every fee to put you in this house. Yes, a used car salesman, a, a con artist extraordinaire. Those were the four rules on how to rob the American citizen. Biggie Smalls at the Ten Crack Commandments. George Bush had the four crack commandments on how to rob the American people, how to crack open their wallets and get every single dollar from them. Thank you, George Bush, for robbing the American person blind. After all, the real estate industry benefits when people are encouraged to buy homes. It's in their self-interest that we encourage people to buy homes. Economists say propping up the companies was a better move than allowing them to falter. Sunday's announcement was welcome news, not only for strapped borrowers, but for mortgage brokers as well. Uh, our members today went in and it was business as usual. They're able to uh, take applications, sell loans to Fannie Mae, close loans, uh, get mortgage products from Fannie Mae, so I think there was no disruption in the market. And I think that's truly a credit to the, the group that put this together, and the secretary and the director in particular. First of all, government-sponsored corporations that helped create our mortgage system. I introduced two of the leaders here today. They call those people Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. The greatest American alive. How can you fund the bank as the American people are defunded? As these American citizens are losing their homes, how in the world can you take tax dollars and put them back in the institutions that robbed American citizens? Why would you pay the robber after the robber robbed you? That's insanity. But that's exactly what the United States government did. That's exactly what they did to you, the greatest American alive, and that's unacceptable. They used Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They gave them money to give you money, and then they robbed you, and they took your home, and then we gave Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac more money. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that, George Bush? Why would you do that, American government? 
Why would you allow that to happen? You, the greatest American alive, you cannot allow people to bully you. You cannot allow politicians to just rob you. You should not be going out at three o'clock in the morning wearing that skirt, American citizen. No, I'm not victim blaming or victim shaming, but you should not have gone in that alley with that random. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Here were the numbers um, from this last summer of the total bailout um, that's been given to the financial sector by us, the well, both by the Treasury and by the Federal Reserve. Um, as, as you can see, the numbers are kind of enormous. We keep hearing, we've heard a lot about the $700 billion TARP program, and that's often spoken of as the sum total of what's been given in help to Wall Street. But as you can see from here, it's a lot more than that. In fact, the total commitment was $12 trillion. We need the courage to tell a better story. We need the imagination to see a better future for the American citizen. You, the greatest American alive, deserve a better future. Yes, you need the courage to fight for it, huh? You need the imagination to believe that it is possible. The financial institution got $12 trillion by asking for it. What can you, what can you, the greatest American alive, ask for, yes? You are the greatest American alive. 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 If you like anything that Project Daddy said, like and subscribe. If you believe in freedom, drop a like. Tell the truth and get some power. Leave a comment. Tell the truth and get some power. Leave a comment. You are the greatest American alive.